GI Zero, which is the next generation internet, a treasure trove of IT innovation. Um, your speaker will be Michiel Linares. He is uh, he used to work for the Netherlands Science Foundation for the Internet Society. He is a W3C liaison officer and he wants to keep pushing the innovation of the internet and move it into the next generation. Please welcome him on stage. So I'm really happy that all of you came out here on the fourth day because I understand uh, uh, after all these long nights, uh, this, is, this is pushing it. So, uh, um, so a quick uh, uh, trip back in time. So this, this room is named after a guy called Edsgel Dijkstra who 60 years ago published, published his PhD. Uh, he was a foundational guy in computer science, and he, he did this work, uh, the seminal work, in an institute called CWI, or at, at the time, Matemati Centrum in the Netherlands. And, I mean, the Association of Computing Machinery said that no other individual has had a larger influence on research in, uh, in principles on, uh, of distributed computing. So, 30 years ago, the organization where I work uh, uh, was founded. Uh, we became a foundation. but. Before that, we'd operated for seven years at CWI in the Netherlands at the same place. So these, these people were really forward-looking. And this is what it looked like. So uh, people with uh, long beards, big computers, uh, they just brought Unix to Europe and, and they were playing with it. And a network of, of uh, hackers and volunteers basically hacked their way to, uh, to, to, to uh, uh, what, what later became the European Internet. Now, at that time, just to appreciate how early that was, the web was still a proposal. It was still uh, something that the manager of Tim Berners-Lee at, at CERN called a vague but interesting. And they gave him nine months of, of, of micro-grant to, to, to work on that. And, and obviously, the, the ideas at the time were that, that I mean, you, this is a representative quote, if you think surfing hypertext is cool, that's because you haven't tried writing it. It was very much the, the idea that we could make everything. And obviously, that's not the future that we got. Uh, uh, Tim Berners-Lee himself, when he got the, the Turing Award, and he accept, in a, which is the, 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 like the Nobel Prize of computer science, he, he, he sa said, from utopia to dystopia in just 29 short years. I mean, it's, 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 it's gone by amazingly fast, but uh, um, if you read the optimism turned into despair uh, where, where th the guy who invented the web says this is a large-scale emergent anti-human phenomenon. That's, that's f for an optimist, that is a, those, those are words that, that go to the heart. And Dijkstra uh, famously has said, well, I'd, people don't need to remember my, uh, much of what I did, only that uh, he, he would appear as some side of, sort of a conscience of the, of the sector, so that 10 years after his death, if somebody would say Dijkstra would have not, would have not liked this, that was the kind of idea that he wanted to exert, to, to, to teach people how to, how to be good uh, computer scientists. So we are in this broken situation, so wh wh where, where, do, where do we go? Well, quickly rewind back to 1997 because the, 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 the people that, uh, uh, that funded, founded the internet uh, in, the, in Europe actually were not professional business people. They were outsiders to the industry. So they sold everything, put it into a trust fund, and basically they gave it to the internet. And, 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 and that's the reason I'm here. Uh, the mechanism that we use is, is micro-grants. We give small amounts of people to, to, in, to independent people and, and, and allow them to work for the internet, uh, to work in the public interest. And it's always open standards, open source, open hardware. So these are uh, just some of the projects that we funded throughout the years. Uh, you may or may not know some of them, but uh, but it's 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 a pretty nice uh, pretty nice list, and and this is by far not all of it because many projects don't even have a logo because that's the kind of early work that that was funded. Obviously, spending money is a is is can be a bit of a problem if you don't have inf infinite amounts. Uh, so so that that's a challenge for us because we started giving away money and it wasn't that much to begin with. So. Uh, um, Luckily, we're seeing people pick it up, and uh, some of the people that receive grants later make some money, and they start giving to us. For instance, there's a company, a security company, Radically Open Security. 
where the employees collectively decided that they wanted to give all of the profit, pretty much all of the profit to us, at least 90%, but uh, so far that's been an amazing uh, thing. And, and obviously that's a sustain, potentially can become a sustainable thing. So uh, um, luckily two years ago, we ran into something called the Next Generation Internet Initiative. And that was a major windfall for us because uh, uh, so far uh, public money uh, on the internet was kind of wasted uh, in, in, in all senses of the word. Uh, people would just write reports and then f fake projects would happen. Um, so we, we were uh, early on, we, we helped them to do this study uh, uh, where we established a vision for this whole initiative. And interestingly enough, we published that last year when we saw the topics of, uh, of this conference, uh, we, we hit two out of three uh, in that report from last year. So we, we also had resilience, we also had sustainability, but we added trustworthiness. That's the, 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 the layer that we, we wanted to have. And so we defined those, that the higher level goals of the program, and then immediately after that, the commission started handing out money. And obviously we were very lucky. We were, consider ourselves to be uh, uh, extremely blessed that, that we got this uh, two, of, two of these programs. Uh, because that will allow us not to write paper, but to actually support people. And we brought a number of, of folks along to, to help us do that. Uh, I'm not going to read them out all because uh, you, you can look that up. Um, but the reason I'm here is to talk about some of these amazing things because they're, they're all small projects. Uh, and they, uh, but, 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 well, I guess we could fill a conference. There's 120 talks as, at, this, at this event. We have 150 projects. Uh, um, I'm going to do a, a, a quick version of them, uh, or attempt to do a quick version of them in the next, uh, in, in, in the next uh, half hour. So um, we have two programs. One of them is called Privacy and Trusting House Technology, and the other one is called uh, Search, Discovery, and Discoverability. And with that, you can actually cover a lot of these grounds. Uh, so um, an apology up front. I, I know there's people in the room and I won't mention their project because I have too many projects to mention and it's just too complex to, to do that in half an hour. I, I have uh, something like 15 seconds per project, so that would not make a lot of sense. And so if you know the project like WireGuard, then, then uh, you'd, know, uh, you'd be happy that we support it, but you, I don't need to detail it. So uh, let me begin with ActivityPub. Uh, so I'm going from the, from the, from the, from the bottom up uh, to end at the more fundamental uh, metal layer, so to say. Um, so ActivityPub is something that uh, is, a, is a social networking protocol and, and uh, you may have seen it emerge in different places. Um, and the cool thing is because of the money that we now have, we can actually support all these smaller projects. So PixelFed, uh, which is uh, trying to, to, to provide a sane alternative to, uh, uh, to photo sharing. So the stuff that people do with, uh, with uh, Facebook and with Instagram. A funk whale is a personal music server. Sprightly uh, is a more ambitious overall social network uh, project. XWiki is a, is a well-known wiki and it's going to be added to the Fediverse. Uh, Open Engiadina is, is a... Uh, trying to connect hyper-local events, so, so local music chapels, uh, uh, concerts uh, in, the, in, the, in, in the library, uh, uh, small events, and then make sure that all these, this stuff isn't aggregated on Facebook or Meetup, but actually comes and stays on the web, that people can actually get these, these events integrated. This course you may know as a, as a, a community platform, and it's also being activ activity publicized, so to say. Uh, Librecast is trying to uh, create an, uh, an alternative to uh, tools like Twitch by enabling multicast live streaming from, from just a, a, a simple device. Um, the the, the Peertrip project, we aren't supporting them directly, but we're supporting what will likely be the largest deployment with over, a, I don't know how many million hours of uh, content that they will put on built and geluid, the national multimedia archive of the Netherlands and they will stress that test this and, and add all kinds of cool stuff about c copyright, uh, open, co open content licenses, uh, subtitle search and so on. 
ForgeFed is uh, a project that rose from the uh, uh, the, the sale of of GitHub to uh, I, I well it's it's was sparked by uh, by, by the, the the sale of GitHub to Microsoft, but in general the idea is that people should be able to host their own software and host their own issue trackers, and then to federate these because ultimately it's just a website. So why can't we have these integrated? A Fediverse space is, is trying to map out the whole Fediverse and uh, will make it possible for you to have a look and see where you where you fit if you don't want to host yourself. Because, well, like in the real world, there's a ti there's uh, uh, room for pubs, there's rooms for hotels, and there's rooms for people's own house, and, and, and uh, for Fediverse, the, the same holds. So for search, uh, I guess one of the founding projects is Circs. I don't know if people have used that, but it's a, it's a meta search engine and it's trying to add, uh, the one thing that Google will never be able to do is to have private, uh, private resources that can stay private and have these be integrated into the single search box that we all use all day. Because we're lazy people, we don't want 20 search boxes, we only want one. So that if, if you want to have alternatives, then we need to be able to, to provide these, these private search domains. So one of those domains is MailPile, uh, quite a well-known mail server. Uh, and Nextcloud is another one that is going to add with, with budget from us uh, this, this, this private integration. Web, WebEx rate, Paul May is here, uh, is, is a project that is going to help you understand when you're searching uh, to not just click on the blue link and then find out that there's a gazillion trackers that are going to kick your ass there, but actually show you up front because that's the kind of knowledge that they're bringing together with the Web X-Ray project. So you, you have a, a better understanding of what traps lie behind the link, so to say. And the Green Web Foundation is, uh, on a similar note, it wants to reward people that do good in terms of carbon offsetting. So when uh, people uh, uh, host a website with a green, in a green data center, you can say, well, I'm gonna have 60 million results. You're gonna show me 10. Why not show me 10 that are hosted green? And then you create an incentive for, for companies to, uh, to uh, uh, do the right thing. And obviously there's all kinds of uh, cool new technologies uh, on the planet, so, such as the interplanetary file system, which we're supporting uh, with a, a, a search project. The DOT Foundation is, is trying to get um, the DAT protocol into the private sphere so you can host your own DAT spaces and um, uh, building a tool to, to make those private repositories available too. Sonar is a search engine that will look into those. Uh, it's a German project that is looking into those uh, DAT spaces. So that will be a, an ideal combination of public and private resources again. And then there's a, 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 an upcoming browser called Next. And they're trying to create... They're not satisfied with the state of the art in terms of browsers where it's just point and click. And you, all you can do is wait for the thing to do. It should be more programmatic, should be more programmable. And on the top of that, they're going to be able to work with both that IPFS and ZeroNet. And then there's more uh, cool search stuff for, for, for private communities like, like the Transparency Toolkit, uh, like MindDive, which is a, a sort of a mixer that allows you to, to, to mix search results from other people basically an overlay network just before the search engine kicks in. So uh, your queries end up with other people and uh, are relayed without you being able to see them uh, and without them being able to see them. And you relay other people's queries and that way you confuse the AIs and, 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 and get a privacy conscious distributed search uh, technology. Open Food Facts is, is a... Uh, 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 an amazing library of something like 650,000 uh, foods that, that you can look into. And obviously uh, those foods are, are uh, uh, the, all the things that you want to know about allergies, about uh, maybe ethical things or about uh, the, where they come from. All these things will be combined in a, in a, in a personalized search uh, environment that you can use. And Yasi, uh, which is a well-known peer-to-peer search project uh, for a long time, is going to build uh, capacity for people to actually set up an instant search shop 
where you can where you can index stuff for people if you don't have the knowledge uh, and and including the whole fulfillment so as to create a an army of, of search providers and then the the next next app folks uh, who created previously the flex search project which is quite a, a well-known project they're now cry, trying to create a uh, uh, a search engine mechanism that doesn't just favor the biggest bookstore from Washington all the time. So they, they will experiment with new ranking algorithms. Applications, we have a plenty too. So for instance, so Silk Server is not a really well-known project just yet, but we think it, 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 it should be because it's an open source conferencing, conferencing server, uh, just like the ones that people use from the big vendors. Uh, but it, it actually it's very much standards driven, so it can use XMPP, it can use SIP, and it can use WebRTC, and it's encrypted. It has in-session uploads. It can do uh, screen sharing and chat, uh, and in general, it's a it's a, it's a cool thing. End-to-end -end sync is a uh, is a protocol uh, where, that starts with the basic premise that if you are uh, using a cloud hoster to put your calendar and your, uh, um, your address book in, why should they be able to read what you put in? Why can't you just lock the black book before you send it there? And Etasync is, is just doing that, and it has applications for all the, uh, the larger platforms. If you're involved with one of the smaller platforms, like uh, uh, Sailfish or, or else, approach us, and maybe we'll be able to fund you too, because we love the smaller platforms, as you'll see. A crypt pad is, uh, after, uh, we all started using uh, Etherpad. Uh, we, we did realize that uh, that ended up with clear text on the other end. So Critpad is doing a wonderful thing where they encrypt all the data client side. It gives you uh, collaborative editing on spreadsheets, on text documents, on polling, on all kinds of things. Uh, but the server is blind, it cannot see anything. Everything is, uh, is, is, is uh, client-side encrypted. Um, we also have a lot of cool fundamental stuff. Uh, so, uh, for instance, Verifpal is uh, made by uh, Nadim Kobesi. He's, he's in the room, so uh, he's the creator of Noise Explorer. And, and Verifpal is actually the tool that should has, has the, I think, the biggest chance of making symbolic verification palatable for normal people. Because uh, we all understand that computers are really good at, at seeing the flaws in our thinking. So, for instance, this is um, how Nadim uncovered uh, some holes in uh, um, uh, proton mail and, and, and nicely reported them. But it's, it's, this is all of it. If you, if, you, if you know anything about this kind of proof, if you read the, 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 the manual, you'll be able to write this, which is, which is pretty amazing. So Rio is, uh, um, uh, is trying to, to, to get rid of uh, the, the socket mechanism uh, that we inherited from the very earliest BSDs, which sucks. It's you open something and uh, everything uh, can start using it as soon as they are your user. Uh, so it's, it's, it's not good. And uh, Rio Wolf, from actually the center of mathematics in the Mathemat Mathematics Centrum in, uh, in, in the Netherlands, or CWI as it's these days called, they, uh, they, they, I think they introduced Unix in Europe, and now they want to repair that flaw. Opaque Sphinx is a, is a, a, a project uh, driven very much by hung Hungarian cryptographers and developers. Um, and what they want to do is, um, we still have passwords, and it's still a, 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 a need mechanism, but passwords should never be on the wire. Uh, and they are still. So uh, by implementing both a password store on the device that is, is, is so good that th you don't have to trust the server on the one hand, uh, so you can use a, a separate password server, and on the other hand, uh, you have uh, protocols that uh, uh, unlock those uh, passwords for you, but they never get stored at the other end. So you, uh, uh, you create a system where you have the uh, the benefits of something simple as passwords without uh, the negatives. And the Android Sphinx project is creating apps for it to go with that. A GNU mess is uh, trying to solve another problem. Uh, if, you, if you're uh, developing an operating system, you will have to accept that you can't just write code and then compile it, because what do you compile it with? You will have to take on something what they call a binary seed, which is something that has been 
uh, going on, uh, passed on like a uh, uh, like a, a kefir plant from from one computer to another, and you don't really know what's inside. So uh, what GNU Mess is trying to do is replace this all with a legible scheme-based uh, bootstrapping system, and also reducing uh, with a factor uh, the, the dependency uh, that, that we bring in. Rober uh, is a, a developing a, a, a robust DHCP server and DNS resolver as a unikernel. Uh, I think there are also people from Rober in the, in the room, perhaps. And DHCP Canon is trying to implement something called DHCP anonymity profiles, which is a new internet standard that not a lot of people are using, but it gives you, when, you, when your computer enters a network, it gives you just that little bit extra of, of privacy. Uh, the ARPA2 project is, is a cluster of projects, uh, and it's probably not everybody gets excited about middleware, but if you think about it, middleware is what, what's running pretty much every company on the planet, and we don't have it on internet, at internet-wide scale. So what, what they're trying to do is actually quite fundamental. For instance, doing uh, uh, getting Kerberos, which is still in every organization on the planet, uh, is using to, to make that uh, federatable. Uh, and to, to improve the security characteristics, uh, to integrate SASL and uh, Realm crossover, to uh, provide all kinds of filters to, to LDAP, so you can have uh, other people share bits of LDAP uh, and, uh, and, and yet uh, keep some privacy there too, uh, to, to propagate uh, system settings so that, for instance, when uh, you don't have to ping, say, Google, uh, which websites you don't trust, but you can collectively uh, uh, combine uh, resources yourself. Uh, and, of course, to make uh, everything that has a user not have to have a user database, because that is just a stupid way of working. And then to, to, to uh, have access control that is actually clever and understands that you may want to not give out uh, your real name or your re your real identity to any just anybody else. So you can give out pseudonyms, but still have access control on those. Autocrypt is a is a is a a, a, a mail specification. Uh, we've had uh, open PGP for a long time. It didn't get traction be be beyond the few million people. We have a few billion people on the internet, so we need to reinvent the protocol, and that's what Autocrypt is doing. We're funding a number of smaller projects around that to make sure that this, this specification, which is already supported by many others, is, is getting this critical uptake. Uh, Identity-based uh, encryption and uh, I reveal my attributes are two projects that uh, are independent, but when they are combined, have a, a, a beautiful uh, synergetic uh, value because I reveal my attributes is, is something where you can prove to somebody that, for instance, you're 18 years old, or to prove that you're German, or to prove that you, uh, you have a dog and you paid your license, but nothing else. So you don't have to give your name, you don't have to show your passport that has your photo on it, that has all these other uh, things about you, uh, including biometrical details, but just that single attribute. And you can take it out of the context. So you can, this is something you can carry along. You prove it once, and then a year later, you can prove it which is, uh, is, is very different from this, this real-world uh, checking that all the background uh, uh, identity management uh, perpetrators are, are using. And identity-based encryption is, is really cool because uh, it allows you to encrypt stuff the first time before you meet people. Uh, and then there's a secure mechanism for people to resolve this, and this will be combined with this attribute mechanism. So you can say, the person with passport X, if you would know their passport, uh, 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 can can open this email and nobody else can and uh, the, the the encryption behind that would be automatically taken off by very good cryptographers. We have a few mobile operating systems, small operating systems. We love independent mobile operating systems. So Replicant is uh, is trying to get a fully free Android uh, distribution. Um, Mimo Leste is trying to revive. Uh, the, the, the MIMO ecosystem that was, well, the, the legacy of the Nokia phones and trying to get that user experience into modern phones. Uh, the Mega 65, I mean, if you thought that, that Nokia was sentimental, then the Mega 65 must surely be, be rocking your world because that's going back to the, the Commodore 65 
uh, and they want to create a. F uh, there was actually a talk here at uh, by by Paul Gartner Stephen. Um, they want to create a phone that is simple enough for people to actually understand because nobody can understand these these other phones, but they used to be simple. So why can't we just have devices that do tho those things? Uh, on the other end of the spectrum, the, the completely looking forward uh, stuff is, is mobile Nixos. I don't know if people know the Nixos ecosystem, but, but Nixos is an amazing, amazing next generation package manager. Uh, and uh, um, if they can support it, then you can unlock about 50,000 packages that Nixos is supporting uh, on, on those devices. We have a lot of open hardware projects too. So for instance, the Nitro key used to be the, the crypto stick. Uh, it's an open hardware USB key. Uh, we have an open hardware laptop, which is going to either base itself on either RISC-V or open power. And it wants to be secure, fast, inexpensive, open, robust, upgradable, and sustainable, and not compromise on any of that. Uh, we have the B-Trusted device, so there was a talk about this uh, from, from Bunny uh, at the conference, so, so you've seen that. We have a project that's trying to get a, a, a system on chip. So basically, just like the Raspberry Pi is a system on chip, uh, you, you, you want to have something that, is, uh, uh, that gets uh, risk five and, uh, or open power, actually, uh, that, that is fully, completely open, including the GPU, including everything. Wishbone is a specification uh, inside those devices, inside the system on chip, and you need that kind of a system, but uh, there's only proprietary systems. They may be free to use, but you can't change them, you can't modify them, uh, or, or uh, actually uh, look very well at the security characteristics. So we have a project that is trying to add streaming to this wishbone specification. We have a project that is, uh, uh, wants to develop ASIC production flows, so, so really make it possible for normal people uh, that, that are not willing to sign three levels of NDAs to, uh, uh, to produce a bit of hardware that they design themselves. And I guess another project very much in the same vein is called Libre Silicon. We have a number of projects from, from that community. Many of them uh, are uh, actually linked to Germany, um, but it's a, it's a global effort. Uh, to, to make fully custom design, period, uh, and to, to own all the all the, the whole stack. Uh, because if you if you design a chipset now, what you do is you go to a vendor, and that vendor will tell you, uh, just give me the recipe. I'll 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 put in my own stuff. So you can say tomato soup, and it, it will make it will give you tomato soup, but you don't know what they put in. Uh, in the, in terms of silicon, then. Um, including a standard cell library, including a, a place or a router, um, and just to not be caught on a single, uh, uh, on a single project, uh, the Coelite 2 project is, we're also funding them. They have an alternative uh, uh, feel as I backend tool, and they can also do placing and routing. And we don't want to be stuck with a single tool. Instead, we want to have multiple good tools, uh, each do new things. Now, and to come back to the pillars that I previously sketched for the next generation, and I said we, we were going for resilience, trustworthiness, and sustainability. And when we, when we wrote that, we actually said uh, in, the, in, in the vision, technology is embedded in concrete, circling in space, and is increasingly entering the intimacy of our, of our human bodies. Little did we know that somebody would propose to actually make a pacemaker and found somebody crazy enough to actually, a patient that needs it to actually consider putting that in their body. But if, if you've seen the talk from Ross Anderson, there have been hundreds of pacemakers recalled because of leaky uh, networking capabilities. So it's, it's certainly not a, a, a trivial thing to do, and it, but it's really cool and it shows the importance of, well, getting this, 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 this whole mechanism right because you can't have those risks. If you put something in somebody's heart and you have to rip it out and replace it with something, that's not a free, like, throw away my phone uh, I, uh, because it's, it's broken. No, y you can't do that. It, it requires heavy operation, could, could kill people. So we have a lot more projects. I mean, this is just the tip of the iceberg. That's why it's called it a treasure trove. You can find all of them online. We have them uh, at these, uh, these websites. And uh, if you see those two logos anywhere, where uh, that's, uh, well, we, we hope that people recognize that, that, that as a hallmark of quality. Uh, we, nothing, would, they don't need to know our names just to have the association, oh shit, interesting, should look at that. 
Um, well, uh, my time is almost running out, so I want to give a big thanks to the European Commission, especially to the DG Connect that, that gave us this money to do this. Uh, without their support, no, we, we might not even exist uh, at this point. And the thing to remember is all these projects need help. Uh, they're not done uh, a done deal. This is not a product that, that, we're, that we're, we can give. We don't have the money to fund all these projects to the level where they need, that they need. So it needs uptake. So fixing the internet is a huge collaborative thing and we, we need all your brains uh, because the brains are the critical thing here. To quote Dijkstra again, the art of programming is the art of organizing complexity and there's a lot of complexity to deal with because you have so many dependencies and so many layers of the system. As, you, as you've seen, we try to bring together these things uh, and, uh, and, and make them work together and that's the kind of a value add that we, we try to give as a, uh, as a funding agency. Uh, but it's, uh, uh, it, it's, we need your brains and there's so much work to be, to be done on all layers. Uh, if you're a legal person or if you're a, a usability expert or a designer, you've seen some of the logos. They're ghastly. Uh, some people don't have logos. Some people don't have any idea how to organize a community. So uh, uh, if you want to, want to do something cool, uh, 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 and, and basically, uh, there are so many opportunities on, on so many different layers. You can do internships if you're a student or, or unemployed. Or, but there's also very senior tasks that, are, that people have lying about for which they don't have the, the capacity to do because they might be working for a nuclear agency and have a good idea. So it's, it's not like they can then quit their jobs and tell their family, I'm going to, to do this full time. So people can uh, sometimes take money and, help, and look for other people to, to work with them. So if you have an interest in one of the projects that I showed or one of the projects on the website, please look at them. And perhaps, uh, well, maybe next year you will be here on the stage. Um, and the last thing I want to say is if you have a great idea, if you know somebody else that has a cool project, we still have money for the next year. Have a look at their open calls. Go to this, uh, to this address. And I mean, that, that's the, the moniker is that we want to reinvent the internet because we believe that it, there's a, only so much uh, uh, time before it fossilizes and it's so stuck in everything that is uh, ossified. So if you don't change it now, we will be stuck with it perhaps for a thousand years. And uh, it's, it's sad, but for instance, with the phone system, we got stuck with something for 100, 150 years almost. So it, it, it's uh, uh, the amount of devices that we're putting out and the amount of technology that we're depending on stuff makes it more difficult to switch. So if you don't switch it now, um, we, 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 there's no way we can, uh, we can repair it later on. And, um, well, the final quote from Edska Dijkstra, the tools that we use have a profound and devious influence on our thinking habits and therefore our thinking abilities. The, the way currently the internet works is bad. It's broken by design. And we, I mean, there have been many talks about this, but we need to do something. And we, we try to bring together so many efforts. Uh, we're not alone. There are other people inside the Next Generation Internet uh, Initiative that are doing uh, stuff as well. Uh, they have different methods. Uh, they have different looks and feels, so you, you, you can check them out. For, in particular, before January 4th, you can help the folks at Dopsy. They're a marketing agency. And uh, other agencies that aren't that first in, in understanding what needs to happen. And they're asking literally, can you help us to tell who we should be giving money to, what kind of things we should prioritize. If you have time, please look at that, uh, that, that URI and, uh, and, and fill out uh, uh, that, that, uh, that, that thing. And now it's time for questions. Okay, questions, there are three microphones, uh, but I see the signal angel already has two questions from the internet. Uh, let's take the first internet question. Should be on, okay. Uh, the first question from the internet is uh, how to make the public mass transport adopt those great projects and how well did you in the past? So in the past, we were kind of content that we were funding all these amazing projects and we were trying to get them to, to, uh, to, to um, uh, scale technically. 
uh, for now, we've actually changed our ways slightly. And, and so one of the things that we do is we try to package everything inside uh, at least one uh, operating system called Nix, uh, Nix Packages, or in, inside one packaging system. We help people with accessibility. So every project that we fund is getting uh, uh, vetted for accessibility and will be uh, officially certified as that. So, uh, and that removes a number of blockers in, in terms of practical adoption, for instance, by governments because they're not allowed to use technologies that aren't accessible. Um